Next to campaign politics, there were eight Republican, Republican presidential candidates on stage last night, but the party's new front runner was the one put to the test. NewsHour correspondent Kwame Holman has our recap. Texas Governor Rick Perry was the main target throughout Monday night's debate in Tampa, hosted by CNN and the Tea Party Express. Perry's chief rival for the Republican nomination, former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney, renewed his attack on the Texas governor's views about Social Security. But the, but the question is, do you still believe that Social Security should be ended as a federal program as you did six months ago when your book came out and returned to the states? Or do you want to retreat from that? I, I think we ought to have a conversation. Uh, we're having with, that right now, Governor. This, yes, we're, sir, that's, we're finish, running for I'll, president. I'll finish this conversation. But the issue is, are there ways to move uh, the states into Social Security for state employees or for retirees? We did in the state of Texas back in the 1980s. I think those types of thoughtful conversations with America, rather than trying to scare uh, seniors like you're doing and other people, it's time to have a legitimate conversation in this country. Romney also questioned how much credit Perry deserved for the relative success of the Texas economy in recent years. You know, I, I think Governor Perry would agree with me that if you dealt four aces, that doesn't make you necessarily a great poker player. And, and, and four aces, and the four aces that are terrific aces the nation should learn from were the ones I described. Zero income tax, low regulation, a right to work state, oil in the ground in a Republican legislature. Those things are terrific. And by the way, there has been great job growth in Texas. Under Ann Richards, job growth was two and a half percent a year. Under George Bush was three percent a year. Under Rick Perry, it's been one percent a year. Those are all good numbers. Well, I was going to say, Mitch, you were doing pretty good until you got to talk in poker. <laughs> but the fact is, uh, the state of Texas has led the nation. While the current resident of the White House is overseeing the loss of 2.5 million jobs. Texas has, during my period as governor, created over a million jobs. And we did that during some pretty tough economic uh, period. Texas Congressman Ron Paul was asked his opinion of Perry's job performance. Does your governor deserve all that credit? Not quite. <laughs> I'm a taxpayer there. My taxes have gone up. Our taxes have uh, doubled since he's been in office. Our debt, our spending has gone up double. Our debt has gone up nearly triple. So no, and 170,000 of the jobs were government jobs. So I would put a little damper on this, but I don't want to offend the governor because he might raise my taxes or something. <laughs> Perry quickly responded. While I've been governor, we have cut taxes by $14 billion, 65 different pieces of legislation. You may not have seen them. Uh, Representative Paul, but the fact of the matter is there are people coming to Texas for five years in a row, the number one destination. They're not coming because we're overtaxing them. But Perry also got criticism from his opponents on some social conservative issues, which may prove more problematic for him as the campaign develops. The Tea Party audience appeared less supportive of Perry when the debate turned to an executive order he issued in 2007. It required that unless parents opted out, Texas schoolgirls be vaccinated against HPV, a sexually transmitted disease that can cause cervical cancer. Was that a mistake? Uh, it, it was, in, indeed. I, uh, I, if I had it to do over again, I would have done it uh, differently. I would have gone to the legislature, worked with them. But what was driving me was obviously um, making a difference about young people's lives. Cervical cancer is a horrible way to die. Former Pennsylvania Senator Rick Santorum criticized Perry over the order. He's saying that his policy was right. He believes that what he did was right. He thinks he went about it the wrong way. I believe your policy is wrong. Perry's explanation did not sit well with Minnesota Congresswoman Michelle Bachman either. And to have innocent little 12-year-old girls be forced to have a government injection through an executive order is just flat out wrong. That should never be done. That's a violation of a liberty interest. Bachman, who has been eclipsed since Perry entered the race, suggested the order might have been motivated by campaign politics. The governor's former chief of staff was the chief lobbyist for this drug company. The drug company gave thousands of dollars in political donations to the governor, and this is just flat out wrong. Right. The, the question is, is it about life or was it about millions of dollars and potentially wow. billions for a drug company? The company was Merck. 
and it was a $5,000 contribution that I had received from them. I raised about $30 million. And if you're saying that I can be bought for $5,000, i am offended. I'm, a, I'm offended for all the little girls and the parents that didn't have a choice. That's what I'm offended for. Perry again found himself on the defensive when it came to a Texas policy that offers in-state tuition to children of illegal immigrants. Bottom line is it doesn't make any difference what the sound of your last name is. That is the American way. No matter how you got into that state from the standpoint of your parents brought you there or what have you. And that's what we've done in the state of Texas and I'm proud that we are having those individuals be contributing members of our society rather than telling them you go beyond the government dough. That gave Romney an opening to join in the challenges to Perry. And with regards to illegal immigration, of course we build a fence. And of course we do not give in-state tuition credits to people who've come here illegally. That only attracts people to continue to come here and take advantage of America's uh, great uh, beneficence. The Republican hopefuls will meet again in 10 days for a debate in Orlando.